How can you take a ordinary so-so kind of chord progression and make it more interesting? That's what we're going to talk about today on Dr. Doug's daily tips for writing great LDS church music. Now, these uh, there there are many ways to take a sort of regular old same old same old progression and make it more interesting. Today, we're going to look at one particular progressive uh, chord, chord progression, chord change, and how this song from page 11 in the Primary Children's Songbook, I Am Thankful to Be Me, uses this same two chords in three different ways in this song. Okay, so in uh, we're in the key of F major here. That's important to note. And in every key, it's very common to have a progression of the five chord going to the one chord happens all the time happens just you know constantly in music especially church music but what often comes before the five chord is what we call the two chord okay so in in f major that would be the two chord would be g minor and then the five chord would be c7 and then the one chord would be f so G minor, C7, 1, F, 2, 5, 1. Okay, so it's the 2 moving to the 5 that I want to isolate here in this song. So look at this first line where I have this in, in, the, in the blocks here, the red blocks. So this end of this first line, you may not know this song, so let me play this first line for you. Um Okay, so we get this G7 to C7, which is not exactly a two chord going to a five chord, but very close to it. It is a two chord, but it's not a normal two chord. The two chord is usually minor. In this case, because of the B natural, they made the two chord major. Okay, so instead of a same old, same old two five, they went major two to a five, which technically in, uh, you know, in, in, in music theory, we call the, the major two chord, we call it a five of five, because if it acts like the five chord of C7, and in the key of C, G is the five. So you don't, if that's a little technical, you know, don't worry. You could also just call it a major two chord. Same, same basic difference. Okay. So instead of just regular old minor two, going to five, we have this major two, and it has a seventh on it here in the tenor, or five, seven, or five, going to five. Okay, so that's the first way they take a normal two, five sound and make it more interesting by making the two major instead of minor. Now, the second way comes in the next line. Let's play that line. You can see where I have it marked in red. Okay, now this one, the chord itself is G minor 7. So it is kind of a regular minor 2 7 going to a 5 7. And so, you know, same old, same old 2 5, but they do something a little bit interesting to freshen it up. The chord holds while the melody does this kind of nice high climax. And then. The D from this chord suspends over, and then so now it's a non chord tone, and then it goes up to the upper neighbor, which is also a non chord tone, and then it goes to the E and finally belongs to the five chord. So they embellish the arrival at the five seven chord with the alto suspension, upper neighbor resolution. So it's actually more of a retardation. A retardation is the opposite of a suspension. It sounds like a terrible name. I know it's kind of an inappropriate word for it. But uh, when, a, when a note suspends over like this and then it resolves upward, that's the definition of a retardation. 
versus a suspension, which would resolve downward. But before it resolves, it has it takes a quick pit stop at the upper neighbor. So it's a retardation that turns into an upper neighbor and then resolves to E. So instead of just going two, five, we get this embellished. It makes boring two, five sound much more interesting. Okay, and there's one more here at the end. I'll play the third line so you get to hear the whole thing. All right, now that last um, block of red there, again, we're getting that G minor going to C7. So it's two going to five. But it's not just straight two to five. Again, the melody kind of meanders a little bit. And before we go to five, we make a pit stop on what we call the one, six, four, which is quite common. This is a, this is a cadential six, four. Six, four just means second inversion because we have a fourth above the bass here and a sixth above the bass there. Um, okay, so the two chord, instead of going directly to five, it makes a little stop at the one, six, four. And then one. Okay, so these three different ways of going two to five helps take kind of regular boring chord progressions and make them more interesting. And notice, each time they do this, it's at a cadence point. Okay, so the first time, just as a review, we get the major two. The second time, we get the minor two, but it gets more embellished on the C7. Which, I didn't, I didn't say this at the time, but that embellishment there uh, grows out of this embellishment here, because we also have this... Um, same kind of figure, but without the F. And then the third time, we get the minor two again, but we make a pit stop at the one, six, four. Okay, so if you're feeling like, oh, my song's too boring, I just have regular old chords, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with regular old chords. They're good. We've been building music on them for hundreds of years but finding some ways to make them slightly different each time can really change the turf and the, and the emotional territory of your piece. So that is your composer gem for today. If you'd like more tip, free tips like this, head over to latterdaymusiversity.com and get my free 24-page uh, report, The Ten Commandments of Testimony Building Warm, Fuzzy Music. Hope you enjoy that and come back tomorrow. We will look at a favorite classic hymn, uh, primary song on page 12, A Child's Prayer. See you then.